Being in the dark can be a very uncomfortable place to be. We grope around trying to find the light switch or possibly we try to make our way to the curtains to open up the light so we can get a little bit of a glimpse of the moon to help us find our way. Come join us for a discussion about moons and mirrors on the way. Welcome to The Way. See the ocean, how it sways in the sun. Keeping our stories in its motion. Now, being in the dark is Life just a very uncomfortable and even scary place to be. We all know that. I mean, right. as young children, we're in, we intuitively know that in the darkness, there are creepy things and monsters and I know, evil right? is lurking and waiting for us. And, and then we kind of grow into adults and yeah, we can kind of become accustomed to the dark and it can come a place where we can find comfort and hide away from the light. And, uh, you know, we, we can just go at this in a variety of different ways, right? There's right. light and there's dark, but I think we all know intuitively as well, that being in the light is a place of comfort, of safety, and it's a place where we can get away from what's scary and unknown. And I think we're going to start to draw into that. God actually knows how we feel and what we think intuitively about darkness and light. He uses that to represent Jesus in the scriptures in a very interesting way. That's right. It goes back to the source. He he designed all of this just like that. Absolutely. none, none, None of this is random. No, absolutely not. So first we're going to look at a kind of a, a part of this where blinding darkness, right? I know we all can kind of understand the idea that a bright light can give you temporary blindness, right? It gives you those white spots in your eyes. But the Bible tells us that the darkness can actually blind us as well. In fact, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 11, it says, But anyone who hates a brother or sister in the dark is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness and know that that darkness can blind you. Right. And so he's getting at this whole idea of the darkness can be so great that it is blinding also. Right, right. You see the great dichotomy from the very beginning. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. It's pretty simple, actually. The uh, Anyone who's ever lived long enough to actually seriously analyze the human experience down here knows it. When the plight of man instinctively comes down to a matter of light. It's everything That's is right. defined by light. The sun lights our world. The moon Right. Lights the night gives us our changes of season. It's one of the earliest focal points, even of the, of the industrial revolution. Right. One of the very first focal points was light. Light. It was right. one of the first great, one of the very first things man turned to was inventing some source of light that would get us through the night. So yeah. we didn't have to use candles or anything, anything like that. From the TVs that we watch to the, uh, uh, to the phones that we yeah, use. That's right. This watch on my hand. It, all of it has to do with the wrangling of light in one way or another. That's it. Um, that's it, it. So it, what it illustrates is that darkness is an anathema to our existence, and we spend a lot of time and energy combating it. Right. Absolutely. I think that's an important statement that we just realized that light is really a source of energy that it's needed for life. Right. Right. We, the, can't, we can't do without it. Right. Absolutely. Well, the interesting thing is Isaiah in chapter 5, verse 20 starts to point out the idea that those that are in the darkness, those that are wicked, actually call the darkness light, or they call evil good, and then says, good is evil, which says, the light is dark. And it actually, he actually uses that terminology with the whole idea that if you're blinded by the darkness, you are going to think it's light. You're going to think it's good. Right. Right. And that's the idea of being blinded. Well, Jesus actually said that if, if the darkness comes out of you, how great is how that? How great is that darkness? How great is that darkness? That's, that's right. That's from the King of Glory himself, the that's creator. Ex- exactly. You know, since we know that our existence down here exists with this light source, God is the source of all life. And he is light himself. You know, whenever uh, in the Bible uh, there was any kind of a theophany uh, okay. that was recorded either by Daniel or Ezekiel or John, he was always described as being pure light. That's right. So as we understand in our when we first illustrated this, there should be an easy tie-in to understand that this is a spiritual thing, actually, first and foremost. Absolutely. You know, God radiates from the throne as an eternal light. He is light himself. Right. He burns as a consuming fire, mm-hmm. and we are his offspring. That's right. So it should be intuitive to us as Christians to understand that this right. whole... This whole argument of light actually does you know, go bore down into the, the depths of our experience. It says actually in heaven, 
there is no sun because he is the light. He lights everything in heaven. That's right. And so to your and point. And it sets the stage of everything we're about to ex- explain. Absolutely. So if you're in the darkness, understand you could be getting blinded by the darkness That's right. uh, in a very unproductive way. Right. Next thing we're going to talk about is the light source, all right? Now, a light source, you know, let's think about a lighthouse for a minute. What is the light source meant to do? It's meant to help those who are lost or wandering or trying to find their way have kind of a compass, have an an idea of which direction to go. And for us Christians, and I think all mankind, uh, the light source, the lighthouse, is actually helping us find our way to our Creator and our Savior in Jesus' life death, ministry, resurrection, and even his ongoing engagement with us is the light source and the light that we're supposed to have. That's right. Jesus was illustrating here something very profound. And uh, there's we get lost in the language sometimes, but what he actually was saying here is that when he was on earth in his physical form, he said, I am the light of the world. That's right. Now, he was basically literally saying that as in his flesh, at the moment, in the flesh world, not the spiritual world, but in the flesh world, he was literally the only light shining out. Right. He uh, illustrated this later also in the famous prayer of John 17 when he prayed to Abba and he was thanking him for, and he was illustrating he had protected his disciples by the power of the name that he was given. That's right. Everything that we enjoy as Christians today because Jesus is at, at the Father's right hand. He is the only source of light right. on the earth. Absolutely. And so just before he went to the cross, uh, there were some uh, Greeks who came asking to see Jesus. We want to see right. Jesus. Remember that? The Lord's response to that was interesting because he didn't, he, almost like he didn't respond at all. He basically right. turned and said, I have to be planted. A seed has to be planted right. before it will grow. He was actually looking to the cross. His response right. to that was saying, hey, look, in order for me to be a light for them, I have to go up. Absolutely. So, And that becomes a really important part of it. And the intriguing thing about light and dark is it's constantly competing with one another for to occupy a space. And that actually is what was happening with Jesus' life on earth here. The light desires to peel back the darkness and reveal everything. Right. And so we see in John chapter 12, verse 35, when he uh, when Jesus told them, you're going to have the light just a little while longer. That's right. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the darkness does not know where they are going. So this is that idea that Jesus is the light, to your point. That's right. And you're going to have me for just a little bit while longer and walk in it before the darkness overtakes you. He He's saying the darkness is going to try to push back on you right. when I he, leave. He told his disciples, it's expedient for you that I go away. Yeah. He said the reason why he wanted to go away to the fathers because he is the source of light. That's right. He told he told them without me you can do nothing. That's right. All right. So he had to go up to the father. He had to basically yeah. make the atonement and then rise up to the fathers because as the only source of light, then he could broadcast right. through Holy Spirit through right. the, for the whole world. And that right. answered the question that the, the Greeks had come. They had come to see him rather than give them the band aid of seeing him for that one moment. Right. He he had in mind of it's going time. He wanted to go up to the uh, up to heaven and then yeah. shine down, broadcast to right. all of his sons and his daughters. And see, we, we are like moons in okay. ourselves, so that we all can't right. produce any light on ourselves. Absolutely, he told us we, without him we can do nothing. Right, and that's that is the transformational walk that is Christianity at its most beautiful, and that is right. the source of light is be, beside the F- Father God. That's right on His throne. Holy Spirit is here with us, and through Holy Spirit living in us with Jesus. We become Absolutely. moons and mirrors. That is just kind of a great analogy to unpack, moons and mirrors. So as we use the light of Jesus, we don't produce our own light. No. It not only guides us in our lives as Christians, but it also provides um, light so that the lost can actually find him. That's right. And so That's the whole purpose. That's the, the whole point. The whole, yeah, absolutely. So we see this. So the light is generated by Jesus, which reveals God to everyone for the salvation of mankind. And then we can also see in the scriptures where light, his scriptures, his command, and I would also say the teachings in the life of Jesus are a light on our path. It says a lamp on the path, on the path for our feet. And so as believers, we never stop using the light either, but it's very important that we become a mirror or a moon and we reflect 
all that love and that grace well, into the darkness so that people can find their way to it's him. It's beautiful. Think about what happened. Uh, Jesus had this thing up his sleeve that no one knew was coming. Yeah. And when he was looking to going up so that he could broadcast down, yeah. there was a guy named Paul, uh, named Saul at the time, running around trying to... Pr- he was blinded by the darkness. Blinded by the darkness, right. Yeah. What happened to him on the on the road to Damascus? Light. Light. A bright light and, shined. You better believe it. And he said specifically, yeah. this is my chosen instrument. The Gentiles were about to get that light they They're, wanted yeah. th- from Jesus right. through Paul because that was the prison through which uh, he decided Absolutely. to speak to all of us. And I think that we have an example through Paul that sometimes being a moon or a mirror to reflect the light is not comfortable. Ooh, and no. there's something that comes along with that. So I think we should all remember when we were blinded by the brilliance of the light on our road to Damascus. The, the entire point of Jesus having to go up, he's God Almighty. He could have done everything, yeah, anything yeah. he wanted to. Yeah. But he chose to work in this way so that he could go up. And we actually reflect his light. Without him, we could do nothing. In this, and right, absolutely. the moon can't reflect the thing on its own. Right. We can't we can't find our way on the path as a Christian, and we cannot help shine the light in the darkness without the light source. Right. And, and, and the seriousness of it is the fact that there's someone out there in darkness, and they may look up and see that moon. You absolutely. may be that moon for somebody else. You might be. In a very dark, ugly, nasty place where this soul is looking for redemption. Right. Not that you can give them a redemption, but you can shine that light that right. is being reflected you off re- you. You can reflect and represent Jesus. That's right. And that's that it's important, man. We have to Absolutely. be clean. And the mirror has to be clean. From antiquity, they used mirrors to get into very dark places, like in yeah. tunnels and stuff. Like yeah, in, yeah. Like they do that in the pyramids and stuff. They would use light reflected off various mirrors exactly. to get into um, and that, that is the concept we need to put in our mind. That is right. exactly what we are. Right. The sun needs to get into some very dark places, and that's Absolutely. what our purpose here our is. Our job is to do that. All right, we're going to do a real quick recap, and that is blinding darkness. Keep in mind we were all once blinded by the darkness. Good and evil cannot occupy the same space, and so we need to understand that those that are out there that are lost, they're blinded. And who's going to go and insult the blind man for not seeing clearly. And so darkness can blind you. Next, the light source. The light source is Jesus. When he was here on earth, he was the only source of light. Right. And then for him to be able to broadcast that light to go out to all of mankind, to your point, he had to ascend to the Father. That's right. And there's lots of scriptures that talk about telling Mary, don't touch me, I haven't ascended to the Father. Right. And it was so he could go up and broadcast out his light. That's right. So that we could be moons and mirrors so that we would continue to shine the light of his love and his grace and his salvation to a dark world and to the blinded by the darkness individuals. That's right. And also he continues to shine it so that we can continue to light our path as we go along. It's our whole purpose here. It's our whole purpose here. We'd like to thank you for listening to this discussion. We would like to invite you to come visit us at thetruthandthelife.com. And until next time, on the way. To learn more about The Way, visit thetruthandthelife.com. Send me a sons of tomorrow.